not copyrighted, not copyrighted. If you want to get any of my video materials, they're not copyrighted, not copyrighted. We still have these scars, fault lines. I've been to the San Andreas Fault, the Hayward Fault, the New Madrid Fault, the Golden Fault. None of them my fault, but I've been there, done that, studied it, okay? There's no question the Earth has cracks. The question is, when did this happen? Well, the textbooks in school say this is part of the Pangea theory. The continents are moving around. Well, I agree the continents are moving a little bit, but the Pangea theory is baloney. They shrank Africa 40% to make them fit. They took out all of Mexico and Central America. Hey, senor, que pasa? Donde esta Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala? Hmm? They don't tell the kids. If you take the water out of the oceans, you'll notice there is dirt underneath. People say, hey, do you think the continents were connected? I say, what are you talking about? They still are. What do you mean, were they? Hello? Always have been connected. <laughs> They're still connected. What do you mean, were they? <laughs> Cover more on that in video number six. The Earth used to have a canopy of water overhead or ice. This would make the Earth like a big greenhouse. How many know what a greenhouse is? They've got all glass walls you have to dress in the basement in a greenhouse. Our world, 200 million years ago. The supercontinent Pangaea, its continuous coastline bordering on a universal ocean. In its irregular forms, we can read the shape of things to come as we can read familiar shapes in clouds. We can infer where India, now wedged between Africa and Antarctica, will soon commence its long journey north to collide with Asia. Where the Atlantic will open moving North and South America to the West. But we will have to infer much more. For on the immensity of this supercontinent we will find none of the great mountain ranges. That too is yet to come. The margin of southern Asia is flat, for the Himalayas will not begin to rise for another hundred million years. That event waits for India's drift north, and the collision that will lift up the mountains. The Alps too are nowhere evident. Before they appear, the Mediterranean must begin to close, bringing Africa in collision with Europe, and folding up the great range we know today. The Andes and the mountains of western North America will begin to appear some million years hence. They will rise up when the westward drift brings the two continents into conflict with the crust of the Pacific. Are we looking at the prelude to the world as we know it? This picture of our planet is a mere 200 million years from the present a small space of time in the four and a half billion years of its existence. Is it possible that this was the beginning? Or were there other shapes and continents, earlier drifts and earlier oceans? Are we looking merely at a stage in a continual process? The answer is yes. And the evidence rises here in the heart of the supercontinent, near the point where North America and Europe will be separated by the still unborn Atlantic Ocean. This range of mountains, the Appalachians, stands as high as the Himalayas, and like the Himalayas, was probably formed by a closing ocean basin. Two hundred million years ago, Pangaea started to break up. The once landlocked Appalachians rode apart on the newly formed continents, and in time, were christened with new names. 
North America and all the other continents seem to stay in the same locations year after year. Actually, however, the continents are moving slowly relative to one another. In the past 200 million years, the continents have moved from the locations shown. The theory of plate tectonics accounts for this movement. According to this theory, the continents and ocean floors are parts of about 30 plates, the largest of which are shown. Each plate consists partly of crust, the outermost layer of the earth, and partly of mantle, a thick layer of hot rock. The plates slide on the asthenosphere, a layer of mantle that is so hot it flows, even though it remains solid. Two hundred million years ago, all the continents were parts of a single landmass called Pangaea. Pangaea broke apart into masses called Laurasia and Gondwanaland. In turn, Laurasia and Gondwanaland broke apart. One piece of Gondwanaland, India, later joined Asia. In the next 50 million years, the continents may move to these locations. These mountains are part of the Cascade Mountain Range, a range of mountains running from southern British Columbia through northern California. The Cascade Range contains numerous volcanoes, such as Lassen Peak, Mount Shasta, the recently erupted Mount St. Helens, and even Crater Lake, the former site of a huge volcano which exploded, leaving this large caldera, which eventually filled in with water. You decide. What force formed these volcanic mountains? The movement of lithospheric plates is responsible for forming these volcanic mountains. Geologic activity, like earthquakes and volcanic activity, typically occurs where these plates meet, called plate boundaries. As we already stated, plates are in a constant state of slow motion. Two plates interact with each other in one of three ways. They can move away from each other, move toward each other, or slide past each other. The arrows on this diagram of the lithospheric plates indicate the direction the plates are moving at some plate boundaries. Off the coast of Oregon, Washington, and southern British Columbia, is a small plate called the Juan de Fuca plate. The place where it meets the North American plate is called a convergent boundary. A convergent boundary is a place where two plates collide. The Juan de Fuca plate is an oceanic plate and is denser than the continental North American plate which overrides it. The process of one plate plunging beneath another is called subduction. As a result of this process, magma is forced to the surface, leading to the formation of volcanoes. Subduction zones are often referred to as destructive zones because the oceanic lithosphere is destroyed in these areas where it is subducted. Deep sea trenches are common characteristics found in subduction zones. The Japanese islands are the result of magma being forced to the surface as a consequence of subduction. Encircling the Pacific Plate are areas of convergence leading to the formation of volcanoes. For this reason, the area is often referred to as the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is also known for intense earthquake activity. When continents converge, as is the case of India and Asia colliding, mountains often form. Along this convergence zone, 
the highest continental mountains in the world, the Himalayas, were formed as...